Hello everyone. Welcome to day 10th of February Lead Code Challenge and I hope all of you are having a great time. The question that we have in today is sub r sum equals k. Here in this question we are given an array of integers and an integer value k. We need to identify the number of contiguous sub arrays whose sum is equal to k. Pretty simple and straightforward to understand. Let's walk through few examples. Here the value of nums is given to us as 111. Three elements are there and we are looking for the contiguous sum of 2. So the first array starts from this ends at this and the second array starts from this ends at this. In totality there are two such sub arrays possible. Let's walk through the second example. Here we have the elements as 1, 2, 3 and the total sum that we are looking for happens to be 3. So the first possible sub array is this one and the second one is this one where the sum turns out to be 3. The output turns out to be 2 as a result. Without further ado, let's quickly walk through the presentation that I have created for this and there I'll explain you the algo to go about it. Sub array sum equals k lead code 560. So let's take a slightly longer example to what was specified in the question. We have the elements as 4, 1, 6, 2, 3, 1, 9 and the value of k that is given to us is 5. So the first possibility of solution is this one, 4, 1 and the second possibility of the solution is these four elements 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 that leads to a sum of 5. As a result of which we need to return 2 as the answer because we were able to identify two sub arrays where the sum happens to be equal to 5. And the approach that we are going to use this to solve this question would be maps and for those who have already solved contiguous arrays that ha came in the month of February this year we'll use the exactly same concept in this question as well. For those who did it along with me, this would be an easy question. For those who don't, didn't, I am there to help you out. So let's get started. As a first go, what we are going to do, we'll build the prefix array across this entire array. So by default, if you don't include any element, the prefix sum happens to be 0. So 0 plus 4 gives us 4, 4 plus 1 gives us 5, 5 plus 6 gives us me 11, 11 plus 2 gives me 13. 13 plus 1 gives me 14, 14 plus 1 gives me 15, 15 plus 1 gives me 16, 16 plus 9 gives me 25. And let's get started, let's create a map. And the key for the map would be equal to the running sum, let's call it rs, or the prefix sum, whatever you want to call it, comma, the value would be the frequency at which this sum occurs in the entire array. And we'll exploit this information to arrive at the solution. How? Let's walk through the entire array and get, get a good hold of the concept. By default, uh, what would be the state of the map? We'll, we'll add 0 as a running sum because it occurs at the frequency 1 assuming that you don't have any element in the map up till the starting position. And now let's start 4 plus, one, uh, 4 plus 0 gives me 4 and what do we do? We check whether 4 minus k exists in the map or not. Does it exist? Let's check that 4 minus k would be equal to minus 1. Minus 1 doesn't exist in the map. So what we will do, we'll simply skip it. It will not contribute to the answer. Along with this, don't forget to add 4 comma 1 into the map. Also, let's create the answer variable that will store the count. Let's name it C. And let's proceed ahead. 4 plus 1 gives me 5. So what we will do, we'll check whether 5 minus k exists in the map. What is the value of i minus k? 5 minus k would be equal to 0 because 5 minus i is 0. And yes, we do see 0 in the map. It occurs at a frequency 1. That means we have found out one possible solution of it. We'll extract this frequency out and we'll add it to our result. So count gets updated to 1. And does it hold true as well? Yes, it does hold true because the sum up till here turns out to be 5 in nature. I hope you understood this and we got first possible solution. Let's proceed ahead. 6 plus 5 gives us 11. Again we are going to do the same thing. Also from the previous step don't forget to add this into the map. 6 plus 5 is 11. 11 minus k is 6. Does 6, 6 exist in my map? It doesn't exist in my map. So let's skip it. Along with this let's add 11 into the map. Let's proceed ahead. 11 plus 2 is 13. 13 minus k is 8. Does 8 exist in my map? It doesn't. So let's skip it. It will not contribute to the answer. Along with this, don't forget to add 13 into the map. 13 plus 1 is 14. 14 minus k is 9. 
So does nine exist in my map? It doesn't exist in your map. So let's skip it. It will not contribute to the answer. Along with this, we'll add fourteen comma one into the map. Let's proceed ahead. Fourteen plus one is fifteen. Fifteen minus k is ten. Uh, does ten exist in my map? It doesn't exist in your map. So we'll skip it. It will not contribute to the answer. We'll add the insertion for fifteen comma one into the map. Let's proceed ahead. So fifteen plus one is sixteen. Sixteen minus k happens to be eleven. So does eleven exist in our map? It does exist in our map. That means you found out another possible solution. And by what factor will your count increment? It will increment by the count of frequency value that is held over here. So the value is one. As a result of which you will update the count to two. And does it hold true as well? We can verify the sum up till here is eleven. The sum up till here is sixteen. So sixteen minus eleven gives you five, which is absolutely in sync with our expectation. That means we found out another possibility of the solution. Let's proceed ahead. We'll let's add sixteen into the map, and it occurs at a frequency one. Going forward, sixteen plus nine is twenty-five. Twenty-five minus k happens to be twenty. Twenty doesn't exist in my map, so it will not contribute to the answer. And let's don't forget to add twenty-five into the map. We are done with the iteration, and the count value after the iteration happens to be two, which is in sync with our result. The time complexity of this approach is order of n, and the space complexity of this approach is again order of n, and it's exactly on the same lines as we solved the contiguous array problem. If you have not looked at that solution and want to try something out, please it, uh, do give it a shot. It will act as a revision opportunity for you guys to get a good hold of the concept. Without further ado, let's quickly walk through the coding section and conclude the approach. So here I have created the map, and the it is of type integer comma integer. By default, what do we do? We add zero comma one into the map. And going forward, I have created the answer variable that will store the count. Sum is can be named as running sum or prefix sum. So what do we do? We start the for loop. We update the sum to sum plus nums. And in case my map dot contains key sum minus k, if it does, that means it contributes to the answer. We extract the value at sum minus k and add it to the result. Moving ahead, uh, we don't forget to add sum comma map dot get default sum comma zero plus one into the map. This is very important. At times, people tend to forget the statement. In the end, we simply return the answer variable. So let's try this out. Accepted. It's fifty times faster, which is pretty good and awesome. Uh, this brings me to the end of today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead, and stay tuned for more updates from Coding Decoded. I'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question. But till then, goodbye. Also, if you are interested in more maps-like problem, then I'm attaching the playlist in the description below. Hope you have a great time watching it.